If you clicked on this video, you probably want to know if your suspicion on what was on the thumbnail image is correct. No worries, I will show you in a minute. But why is our brain able to recognize anything at all, despite the heavy pixelation? For this, we will discuss the study of Wisniewski and Palin from 2001, in our series Neuroscience in 3 Minutes. Start the clock. Wisniewski and Palin studied the interactions between visual brain regions during context-based visual recognition. Context-based recognition refers to the fact that we are able to see things clearly by using background information which is particularly important if visual conditions are not ideal. For example, take this image of a dark and misty road. You are able to recognize the truck without problem. However, when removing the background, that truck is nothing more than a blurry box. This means that at some point, visual information about an object within our focus and the background needs to be integrated. Two candidate brain regions are the lateral occipital cortex, abbreviated as LOC, and the occipital place area, abbreviated as OPA. The occipital place area is activated when seeing places and background sceneries, like a beach, a forest, or a city setting. On the other hand, the lateral occipital cortex has been shown to respond to all kinds of isolated objects, such as cars, tables, household items, but also outlines of animals and humans. Since our vision is heavily context-based, one would expect these regions to communicate. But when does this happen? And where is the information combined? These are the questions that Wisniewski and Palin attempted to answer. Their goal was to disrupt brain activity of these two regions using transcranial magnetic stimulation and did this at different time points after showing an image. Two kinds of images were shown. Isolated objects with no background or images with blurry objects and a complete background. Participants were asked which object they saw. The results showed that it takes about 160 milliseconds for an image of an object or a scene to reach the LOC and OPA brain regions respectively. Furthermore, they found that disruption of the scene-selective OPA made it harder to recognize objects with a background. Even though the OPA itself does not process the object information, it shows that scene information must have been used to recognize the object. Indeed, additionally, they found that the object-sensitive LOC is activated at two time points. First, after 160 milliseconds after seeing an image. At this time, the LOC processes isolated objects. And then there was the second time window, after 260 milliseconds, when the information about the scene is integrated to recognize a blurry object. Or, in other words, when the LOC cannot identify an object the first time, it waits for the arrival of scenery information. After the scenery information arrives, it attempts to recognize the object again a second time, which suggests that object and background information is combined in the lateral occipital cortex. Stop the clock. That's it. We hope you enjoyed the breakdown of this study. If you did, we would be grateful if you could like this video. Anyway, we hope to see you the next time.